Well, hello there, everyone. So, uh, well, today we're, we're going to be going through uh, one of MH's most recent drafts, aren't we? I think you should do the introduction here because uh, it's, it's your draft, mate. So uh, lead us it, in. It, it, it is. Uh, so we're doing a War of the Spark uh, draft here because it was added back to Arena a couple of days ago as the other premier draft alongside of Kaldheim. I love War of the Spark. It's got a soft... Uh, a little soft spot in my heart because it was the first proper set that was on arena when i, I fully committed to playing arena um i thought it was a super fun draft format so i was quite happy to have it back um and i decided to plunge in and and give it a go this isn't the first draft that i did this is the second one um so yeah i'm curious to know what you guys thought about my picks talking you through feel free to question me on my choices well, I'm going and to then we're going to take you. a look at the games as well. I'm going to question you on your first choice of playing War of the Spark in the first place. Like, I, 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 I have to admit, I disagree with Matt. I, I, I'm not a fan of War of the Spark, but I can see the appeal, especially the red blue deck. It's such it a was, joy. I thought it was fascinating. Uh, fascinating it, it is was, not the same as good. Yeah. Like it, 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 it exists <laughs> kind of completely separately from everything else, just because of the the wildly different uh, you know, inclusion of the placewalks. I'm just trying to get myself back into the the War of the Spark headspace because yeah, it was a very because of the sort of prevalence of planeswalkers, you, the play patterns actually kind of worked very differently, and card evaluations changed based on that as well. Because you you had uh, you know sets of uh, uncommon planeswalkers that, uh, that all did various different things, and were all quite powerful. But there were definitely some that were more powerful than others. I remember Sahili being very very strong in a uh, in the. Um, Whoa! Wild. Pack one, so, pick one, yeah. Kefnet. Hello. I, I was I was pretty happy here. So I mean, yeah, you can see there wasn't a lot else I was gonna go for there. Mm -hmm. Um going to hit immediately, I was like, do I go for the role reversal? Do I just commit to blue red straight away? Then I was like, But no. then we remember that role reversal is bad. It's so. it's not great. So yeah, I'm looking at like traffic fire, isn't it? Like, Heartfire here is pretty nice and oh oh the Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't even see the Drake, yeah. I think that that's because that, if nothing else, you don't even have to go into red if you don't want to. Like you've just mm. got the base of. Like, I mean, at this yeah. point, you should be picking the best cards that that you're presented with anyway. And Kefnet and Thunder Drake are, are good choices. I feel. So I felt pretty good about that, and then that led me to kind of Tyrant School and thinking along picking the best card. Yeah, I mean, the I remember the the five four vanilla creature being quite good as well. Um, annoyingly. Oh, I I think I make my first decision here that people are maybe going to question. So no escape was like pretty strong. I think um, profit cool. profit was fun as well. I like uh, uh, um, yeah. Mark Harvest. Uh, is, is Spoilers. Really I'm not gonna go for either of them. <laughs> oh no. We'll go for the triumph. Oh he drew, no. Drew a divination. He drew a divination. He drew... Mark Harvest. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Fine. Okay, well, Fair enough. Spellgorge weird. Excellent card to oh, be yes, part, especially the given the colours really. you're in. And and Spellkeeper yes. weird too. Mm. Oh yes, I do remember those being very. They had a very good synergy, didn't they? Uh, that, yeah, that good, I mean, in fairness, the Spooky Weird makes Jace's Triumph look like a good pick. Now, Looking at the cards you haven't picked, I've I've been seeing a lot of nice Boros cards go by. Mm. Like to to just to discuss early lines of like potentially other plays. Like I think because you got the Kefnet so early on, like you kind of have to go balls deep into blue. But um, but like Tenth District Legionnaire is really good, and I, I and, agree with and you. I've seen a lot of good red and like some fairly good white cards in there not that white was particularly good in war of the spark if i remember correctly uh not that war white is is good in any limited environment to be fair i, I like the uh totally lost pick there i found i found totally lost to be a fantastic um tempo play that ability to put a permanent on top of the library and i think it's that crucial thing of permanent yes it yeah. is and like you say a huge loss of tempo you're just going mono um, blue here yeah well but i was feeling quite good at this point in the draft. to be fair the actual draft, I think it ends up being an okay to quite good deck. So perhaps I don't know because where we're where you're at at the moment, where you've sort of you know you've gone you're fully committed to blue. I don't know if that just then dries up your your other avenues a little bit. Fair. Because already here now, everything starts to look not so great. Isn't Crush Descent pretty good? I couldn't remember. That's my 
time out from the format. I mean, it's probably the best card there, unless Dovin is secretly good. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of blind. It's blinding blast, isn't it, or something like that? Blind blast. Yeah, so that's, yeah. A, that's like an aggro card. Isn't yeah, I think it? blind blast is yeah. a bit of a trap. I think anything that deals just one damage is a bit of a trap. You turn it against some of your natural card there, and. Uh, one of you're, you're, cars. you're gonna take it five four uh it's oh. black, black oh the raging crunch i remember the raging crunch and Dovin's probably not Dovin's Dovin's no Dovin's 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 friend massacre oh, girl and ashiok oh, and how, oh, how good was this pack and, oh, the next, and the giant's greeting like this pack I take the massacre girl. Who wouldn't like if you can M build like a Demir deck like that? That you're, you're laughing. But then another not... spell gorger. Right, and this is where I think maybe my deck tries to be a bit diffuse because I I, I got suckered in by the second spell gorger. You know, and I've got a reasonable. Well, having two spell of... gorgers isn't terrible. And I mean, then look, the Rouse outburst. Yeah, then then yeah. there's a Rouse outburst, but there's a second Obnix cruelty. Uh, but but I do think Rowles was probably I the think, right I player. I think it's the correct player. I mean, I, I loved playing with Rowles Outburst. So even good. even in standard, I was rocking Rowles Outburst. It was it was now, at, at this point in this pack. Now for me, I wasn't feeling great about. As you can see, I, I think about Liliana's triumph. But the Skulker's good. The Skulker's good. Ashok Skulker, I thought was really good in the format. Like it's just a three solid three five, and you pick it. Yeah, I think I, I think that's the correct it. play. It's because it's a good way to kill off Planeswalker, isn't it? Right. Uh, that's I, I ended up going to that, but as you can see, I very nearly went for Liliana. But I was, I was like, no, I think I I need to commit to blue red here and going in. Yeah, you are at the point where you need to massacre yeah. girl. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I think my, my cursor tells a thousand <laughs> thousand words here. You can see the anguish. Oh, Honor Lazatep the God Pharaoh plating. is really a card you want right now. Or, um, I mean, Lazatep Plating is also amazing, especially given that, like, the red-blue deck is all around, like, building one threat yeah. and then protecting that threat, but... Um, although you go for the... Honor do you the go God for the Pharaoh. Dam Breaker there? Or did you already have... No, you go for the Honor of the God Pharaoh. Oh, you can't. You it's it's a uh, discard a card, draw two cards, a mass one, isn't it, or something yes. like that? Yeah. yeah it's yeah, it's okay. just really good in this deck for like refilling your hand, generating a spell trigger for the uh, spell gorge or weird, you know. Man, it's such a shame that you've lost Masca Girl at this point, uh, though, because that just disrupts the game. Oh my goodness. Bolt second... Bend? What's that? Spellkeep, Spellkeep weird. It allows you to change the direction of a spell with a single target. Oh, there we go. I helpfully hovered over it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, oh, like, I remember Tamiyo's Epiphany being quite nice. Yeah, I'll describe I, I, I four think, and then draw two. I think in that scenario, I'll go for Samet Sprint, maybe. I don't now, know. Now, this Tyrant Scorn has wheeled, so I'm like, Oh, ah. I've taken the 1-1-1. One, the one, one, hey, if you uh, go... There. If you go... No, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe. But, like, Grixis... No, I, I mean, I hate 1-1 one, one for 1s in Limited. So, like, I, I think, like, being able to... And I love splashing three colours. So, like, going for the Tyrant Scorn makes and sense. And Matt, that's why I took the Prismite there. Because it, it is sort of a mana fix. Uh, yeah, it's not I great. Like Prismite's like fixing things that when your draft's gone a, you, wrong, it's kind of like if you're like, ah, finally I can justify the fact that I've got three yeah. colors for no reason. Prismite to me strikes me as like Apollo 13 style fixing, where you know, you, you, you've, you've lost the moon, but you, you still need to get home. <laughs> See, Ugi's Conjurer, I think, was possibly the choice there. Because Tibalt is... triggers your. your... Non creature country is so huge. <laughs> it's true. Please tell me you go for another spell gorge away. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, Kazmina's pretty good. Like, I've seen games just one off the back of Kazmina and a little bit of like a planeswalker synergy. Um, I like Kazmina. Yeah, how many creatures <laughs> at this point? Yeah, he has like 10 creatures, like, even more potentially. But he's actually he, drafted he, creature he's actually heavy. Playing. Uh, yeah. I, I can't remember the sort of balance you needed in um, uh, in this format. The Cyclops is fine. Probably, yeah, probably Catharsis. I remember a lot of people playing one of Wars of Runes. I remember them just coming down turn one mm. in so many games. It's got to be the Skull Gorger, right? Yeah, yes. If, if you're building a deck with one, <laughs> yeah. with one purpose, you're getting wheeled a lot of spell gorges, which is oh, yes. really tasty to see. I mean, yeah, it shows. That I thought everyone of... just drafted is it in this in this set. I thought that was just what everyone did. 
I think uh, it's what no, we it being one of the strongest formats or for strongest, yeah, um, archetypes. So, so I think about taking the fire mind vessel. <laughs> I can I can absolutely see why you would do that as well. Um, but you're actually not weirdly high. You're not high on the curve. You just you need splash when you want to splash, don't you? Um, but yeah, that's that's fair. That was a fair decision. Really didn't I, like taking contentious plan there. Yeah, but... I, I don't see where you get your benefit from. I mean, like, I guess it, it makes your spell gorge a weird, like, up by two, which is always nice. Actually, yes, yeah, so you want to know Sorry, what... that, that was a rare drop for Vault Progress there. <laughs> that was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you were putting the other thing in your deck, so uh, that's. You got a good Excuse number of creatures there. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah, as, yeah. As, as Adam says, Shadow Aspect says, Adam, ha whatever. Uh, you know, how many of them are you going to run? Maybe not all of them, but still, it's a good number. Like you don't want to be running as many creatures in this kind of deck. I mean, you've got you've got quite a problem to solve with your uh, actual deck construction here because it, it, there's a lot of uh, Another... lines of thought and lines of play that you can go down with the the card pool you've generated. Yeah, I, I like the the honor of the god the pharaoh. I think that's a good play. In limited, Three it's just them. so nice Three to be able them, to. Though. Well, like, yeah, but I mean, like, being able to throw away your lands in Limited is really, really useful. Uh, yeah, but they tend to punish it by being kind of under rate earlier in the game. Later in the game, yeah, very, very good. But they don't perhaps reward, reward you so much in the turns ones, two, and threes of the game. Oh, I remember the 2 3 flyer being um, weird and yeah, good as well. Yeah. I think there's sort of like cards like that are like signposts for experienced limited players that are like, ah, yes, I must draft this. Right, so on to deck building. How, how does he turn, turn one into the other? Please tell me you just ditched all of the swamps. He did not ditch all of the swamps. Hey, Matt, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, I kept the two tyrant scorns. Did that mean you kept the prismite as well? It did. And that's probably probably the mistake there was that I should have probably just ditch the prismite and risked risked it. Because actually there was a there is a lot of filtering in this deck. Like it yeah, gets through itself man. with the with the burning prophet scrying, lots of things like that. I think I actually could have got to my I, I think you might have just overvalued Tyrant Scorn a little bit. Yeah, and I might have been putting my constructed lens on that. I really might have been doing that there. Because I never really played with it in, in draft. But in, in constructed, it was so versatile. Uh, in having those two modes. I still don't like the fact you've got Blind Blast in the deck. I think that card is just a trap. It's, it's, it's not for this kind of deck, is it? It's for the, it's for the pure aggro. But I mean, what else? I guess I could have had an erratic visionary instead, something like that. That would have again helped with the filtering to get to the swamps, that kind of thing. Even just like a, a dude, like, I don't know, like the the snaky eternal, like the three two for three. Like I would have preferred that to a blind boss, I think. So my logic for having it in the deck, it triggers spellgorge to weird. It draws cards. It cycles itself. Like yeah, it's not great. I'm not not trying to say that it is, but I think that is worth. I still think that is worth more in this deck than a 3-2 with no abilities. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm underrating but, it. No, no only, bec only because we've got the Spellgorger weirds and the Thunder Drakes if you can chain two spells together and because it replaces itself, there's a slightly higher chance of hitting that. It's pretty marginal. Like, I mean, I didn't get any of the... I didn't get any of the really good tempo cards for this deck, like Callous Dismissal. Yeah, I, that is um, a, a noticeable problem with this. Don't name yeah, your deck first problem. That brings oh, us... Are you going to get a little name, are we? We're not. Oh. Uh, oh, what's happened? That's the the end of the drafting portion that I stopped oh. recording before I went into the next part of the... Very, very clever. Okay, video. so so how do we so, feel about that deck to begin with? Let's just summarise our thoughts there. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm going to... Oh, you first. I was quite happy going in, not super happy, because like I said, I didn't have any of the tempo, what I think of as the tempo, is it, cards, like the Callous Dismissal, um, but I had spell gorges, I had a good amount of spells, I, I was lucky enough to have a good bombing Kefnet, 
Um, from what I remembered of the f- format, I thought this will be okay. I was my prediction was probably three three. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, I, I think, I think yeah, the constructed side and the overvaluing tyrant score and then compromising your mana base for it, uh, and potentially the land base being slightly skewed as well because I think you had a lot more blue in there than red, or what, or the other way around. I can't remember. I I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it's my place to necessarily oppose you on that, but I also think that every single card that he's going to present as a win condition is also red. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, I think it could have been just one. one but it ended up being because of the integration of the tyrant score and the three swamps to support it. You ended up having seven of each, and uh, that's potentially problematic. Given that I think a lot of your early plays were blue as well. Maybe, maybe. I think I think it's actually fairly balanced on the play side. I, I I was I was having a flick through, and it seems like most of them, because also like. His curve basically begins and ends like well, it it, it ends at four really. I mean, he has one like what like he has. You have one six drop, don't you? In this one six this, drop, the, yeah. So I, I think I think I don't know. Like, I, th- I think it's fine. You don't have too many double costs as well, so I don't think actually the ma- the balance between the lands matters all that much. And, and, I, and I think in terms of strategy, that the you know the best limited decks have a plan, and I think this deck has too many plans. That's. I think that's a really fair point. That it's definitely not that there's no synergy. There's too many small synergies that don't add up to a big enough whole. Because I think yeah, the they double can be, yeah they can be parallels one another, um, and and you're just you're trying too hard to force the. I think I feel like I've I've really uh, siloed in on the tyrant scorn thing, but um, I, I remember the best. Uh, is it decks and it's all that went off when they were kind of everything was just clean is it it just kind of um that everything synergized very nicely when your rouse adverse and your spell gorge of weirds all come together and, and they don't need to be they don't need support from any other colors they, they're, not, they're not trying to find spells in any other colors and i think maybe there was a different version of this draft where i pivoted in pack two when we started to see like the cruelties and I went with the menace girl where maybe I switched it into blue black. I think that could have been a different line to go down. And I think maybe that would, yeah, that would have been obviously a very different draft, but yeah, I think you're right. There's, there's lots of plans I'm trying to, to put into effect here. And and I think you see that in the games that that they're there. I'm drawn in multiple directions. Speaking of which, let's get the games going. Yeah. Yeah. games. Yeah. sound of silence as we uh we wait for the game to start okay good good I, you've got a blowy boy as your uh, blowy girl bl- blowy person blowy girl blowy person as a as a as a person to look at the loading screen if your timer fuse runs down and you don't have any time extensions you'll be ready apparently it's all fine okay and you're, are... you're dropping a plat as well which yeah uh, is is getting towards the hard end uh, oh okay yeah so mh9 <laughs> Okay. This is this was super sad because I I saw the cards on the right first and I was like, great cut. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's unfortunate. That oh, is, but is that's good. still a great this hand. Not a, you can drop contentious plan thing. and feel feel. Actually, no, probably totally lost. I dropped the totally lost. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. It, it, at at that cost, you can afford to get rid of it. And uh, do you play contentious plan on turn two, or do you wait to your spell cause with? Got, you've I... got to play it. No, not play it. Sorry, you've got to you've got to save it. Right, like. I believe I save it. So immediately yeah. you're up against uh, red as well. Interesting to see. But it's red black, and I just I I was already thinking, oh, I'm gonna run my spell gorge weird straight into into Some a piece of, of removal. removal. Yeah. Though I did feel a bit happier when they played the two two with no abilities, but yeah, actually when you know, and Ooh, that confused uh... me. Uh... <laughs> That's, that's, I guess, that's, like, that's... even if you cast, like, a non-creature spell just throughout your entire game, the spell Gorge of Weird is still up. It doesn't need to be the biggest threat in your deck. It can no, just it, be a normal creature. Exactly, exactly. I wonder if um, there's a line where you actually put down the Weird there because it defends a lot better than your... Sorry, the Spell Keeper rather than the Spell Gorge. 
because yeah. it's going to block and you want to protect it. So you just let four, you, you tell them four damage, please. Okay, I mean, that's a that's a top, yeah. top, top pull. That's very Moorish. Do you just blow, blow up their spell gorge weird at this point and just try and hope they don't have anything in response? Pretty much. Oh! Yeah, I feel really <laughs> happy. <laughs> I'm so I'm moist right really, now. Really, really happy, and actually, I get a bit cocky. Oh no, I don't. I no, thought this. Was... I'm surprised I... that you played it in main phase. Why didn't you attack I... it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. So, yes. Well, uh, that sucks. But then you've got your own bomb as well. But right. So, yeah, I I wasn't over the moon to see Sarkar, but I thought I'm not I'm not out here because you know, I've yeah I've got Kef that. So you've actually got quite a few lines of play here because you've got proliferating and drawing, you've got putting down your defense. I decided to do this because I think it defends against the dragon well. I'm hoping I can start accruing, you know, value by hitting the casting a, a, a copy of so the spell. Oblix, it's a, obli oblix, no, they they, they, they exile it straight away. And obviously it's got wow. its protection. Yeah. So I, yeah, guess what? I put it in third from the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who um, but so I'm not. Crazy that's got when it's exiled as well. Mm. But oh, yeah. This doesn't not... feel like this is on you. This just feels like you ran headfirst into a deck yeah, with just so one of the strongest been... bombs in the set. Uh, I remember being wow, and he holds it back as well. That is, um... oh no, he doesn't. Oh, no. Okay. Well, why is he holding back the other? Why? Is... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It feels like He's... he could have attacked much more aggressively there. So, what does can Cathartis snipe a dragon? Can't. It's player or planeswalker. Fascinating. Is that hmm, again? You could have taken him out while he was in. Oh, I see what you're doing. So you can attack in. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he has to throw the. You can throw does the goblin. Want, does, it, does, it, does, does he decide that he wants your spell order dead, or does he decide that? Uh... I think I'd have probably try to take out the list. I mean, I don't know what his hand's like, so... I mean, he can use Kaya to just blow blow it up next turn. Well, he, he goes through all the iterations of... Um, yeah, every every single it. play under the sun. Hey, they're thinking through the lines of play here, and... Yeah, which is which is, which is is fair play to them as well. Uh, interesting. They go with the one that I wanted the least. Yeah, because they could just exile your weird right. Oh, yeah, no, and no, then no. look at this. A third planeswalker, so they don't even... Wow. So yeah. they've, they've done quite a good job of being able to play their off-colour Planeswalkers, because they both need white, and uh, they haven't done it. So well, they're, what, they're double mana, are. so they're easy to cast. Yeah, they, they are. They are. I mean, so you, so you sort of... You don't really get Kefnet earlier than you would have done. <laughs> Um, just because you would have drawn it anyway, but... I mean, this is not looking pretty. Yeah, it, this, no. It's not enough, is it? It's not enough to go on board. It's like, oh, yeah, hold yeah. on. Yeah, they I'm just have three <laughs> creatures. I don't have the mana to play three creatures. I think they curved out spectacularly, though, here. I mean... Do they do they play any other spells or are they just they're just happy that they've won here, I guess? They're just happy that they've won. You lost a Sarkin, and without a Sarkin, and you you you're probably actually <laughs> And they had the removal for it as well. Well, I mean they do. The flat players do. <laughs> yeah go down with that ship so like that game i actually didn't feel too bad about i don't think if you still felt to mulligan at that first hand i don't think it would have made a difference to how the game would have gone as well no because um, i think it would have still been pretty hard to fight through the three walkers yeah does your deck just lack removal it, and it's not particularly fast yeah because once those we, threats resolved, you basically your deck just doesn't have an answer. I was just like, it, and that's where the Callous Dismissal is such an important card for the Is It deck. Mm. 
just being able to bounce the permanent, even even at sorcery speed, to just be able to say, do you know what? I, I'm not going to deal with that for a turn. Trypanosum, hello. How are you doing? Or just uh, to uh, absolutely snipe their uh, amassed token as well. Fine hand, great hand, in fact. I think that's yeah, really good. Two drop, that. three drop, four drop. Love it. I was pretty happy. Tyrant Scorn is playable because of the Prismite. I remember Harris. Burning Prophet being really good as well, actually. Yeah, so yeah. Harris, it's going to tear into me over this game. Oh, I remember this game. Yep. Oh, that that that, that feels good. Oh, oh, please tell me you don't, you don't drop your Prismite next to... You've got to play Tibalt, right? Drum roll, please. Boom! Yeah, he drops okay. it. Hey. Just because it also scries you and you can try and get your land. Yeah, that, exactly. That's, that's nice. And actually makes your blocks look pretty good as well. Yep. Um, like. Does it? Yeah, so it's just Tibble, because the Tibble, uh, he. Um, the little devil snipe stuff oh, and yeah, one yeah. really dies, so just a terrific blocker. Spoilers, I'm playing the mirror match. <laughs> <clears throat> See, didn't hit so my fourth good. land. Yeah. Not ideal. Do you just like honor the god pharaoh just just to guarantee it? So, so you should probably pitch your tyrant scorn here with the honor of the god pharaoh, right? And yeah, this is where I probably make a mistake because, yeah, you're right. Looking back on that, yeah, clearly I should have honoured the God Pharaoh to pitch yeah. the Tyrant Scorn. Drawn two cards. Or even even pitched the Prismite. Yeah. If I was obsessed with keeping the Tyrant yeah, Scorn. Yeah, either one of those would be excellent drops. And I think that that was that was definitely something that, that causes them to be able to get on top of me a little bit here. But don't worry, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. They, they made the conscious decision not to take out the planeswalker there as well, which is because, uh, I mean, he can't do anything and they're not getting life. Oh, wow. Okay. And then they uh, they tear you back. Oh, we love it. Because with the Rowls in your, with Rowls outburst in your hand, you hit that fourth land. You are sitting pretty. Yep. But you do not. But he did not hit the fourth lap. Right, so now you you honour the God Pharaoh, right? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> For all my credibility. It's, it's the tyrant scorn. So the fact that you can, you've the got the spellkeeper weird in hand means that you can fetch back the tyrant scorn even if you pitch it. But it's the spell gorger weird. <sighs> because I had two of them, and I was like, it's going to be a while before I can get both of them out in a turn. I, I'm i not sure I agree with that, but I see the logic. I see the line so of play. You've, you've, you've basically just uh, unfortunately ended up a turn behind now, haven't you? And I never get... Oh! And look! Oh, hello, Raoul! Yeah. This okay, is where so... things starts to get pretty mad. Because this yeah. Raoul, I love this Raoul. Uh, so Raoul's Storm um... Conduit is so much fun. So good. He's so hard to kill. In this yeah, that game. plus two. Oh. <laughs> All of the spell gorges. Ooh. Yeah, I mean this that, that presents he's he's got a perfect wall for it. As I said, the little guys block really well. They they make your prismite look like junk. Yeah, I think this is where you start start throwing down your spell gorges and just look to make your your your, your to make them as big as possible as quickly as possible, right? Is that your play? That's, I mean, that's fine, because if you're looking to next turn, go grab your, your draw spells, you can cast it again and get more favourable stuff, but I think... I, that doesn't I, put any pressure on the round, Yeah, I, I'd want to put pressure down, and the spell gorger weirds would enable that. I suppose I could have got one of them out there. Yeah, yeah. I think I was thinking about preserving my life total way, way too early there, because actually... I am still on 18, and they're... They've not got they, huge yeah. creatures. They've got lots of dirty no. little things. Yeah, they can't really attack it. I mean, they've got the 2-3 flyer, and that's fine. But, like, you're on a nine-turn clock. That feels fine. It's a bit scarier now that he has more uh, in the air, but... 
Oh no! I mean, this this is gonna get nasty. Oh, gonna be yeah, this no. is. Uh, it's gonna be a uh, send everything back to your hand, right? Well, then he wouldn't copy it. Oh my oh, god! Yep. No, oh it's, my it's god! As horrible as you, yeah. But oh, that's degenerate. Is, and uh, this is why. This is horrible. This is just nasty to watch. But you would have to be careful about where you snipe things here as well, actually. Not really. You just blow up all the one ones, right? Like that's no, just the one ones blow up. You blow you up back. Yeah. So you, you just clear the board of them, so you don't have to worry about them later. I suppose they can't. Once he's killed all of your one ones, yes, you can't kill. Yeah. It's almost like you're you're afraid of the the threat of the thing going off. It's just like, well, if I'm in a position where it doesn't really matter if the things go off, like they may as well go off now. So yeah, excellent use of Ralph's copying. Yeah, that was that's 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 taking his time. Good. Not the way I would have gone with it. I was surprised. Yeah, that is an intriguing. Yeah, and then what well, just leaves that on two? What's? Oh, I guess he he wants you to b b block. I I suppose, but I don't know. Like I I think I think that was a. That's not the player would have chosen, but fair enough. I guess it lets him attack him more safely. Like you can, you can freely block one of them. It will still have a chain reaction if he targets the. Yeah. The yeah, it's it's there. quite it's quite fun, isn't it? If 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 that happens, it does oh, not. He's just he's treating his deck like a burn deck. Okay, I and I can see the logic because he's got the the two flyers. He just needs to put you on a shorter shorter clock as possible, because you're not presenting any any defense to his flyers. So he's just identified no. that doesn't the ground game doesn't matter. It's all about the air game. That's that's a fair point, actually. Um, nonetheless, I, I, I think clearing all the key creatures there is still like. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, actually, I kind of see the logic because, like, clearing the one ones, like, if if Matt attacks him with those one ones, then so what? It's two damage a turn. Um, whereas. Your opponent's doing five. Like, it's fine. Bet you wish you hadn't played the land this turn, now. Yep. That's something to learn, isn't it? If if you're going to draw off a, off a spell and you... Don't play your land. Play your I land. know, and that felt like a really, a really, really basic thing. Uh, yeah. Ouch. Yeah. God, I love Ralph's <laughs> Yeah, and drawing four cards off it feels really good. But he doesn't have a Jace Planeswalker, so he's technically losing advantage. <laughs> I don't I mean, think he needs to worry too much <laughs> about advantage at this point. Crying and drawing. and I mean, this is a tale of getting destroyed by really strong bomb rares as well. I mean, you know, there's still definitely things to learn. But yeah, I mean, there, there are some... If you do, you know, just come up against people who have strong cards than you do and that's you have to accept that but i i definitely i i do think there are some uh, learning points about like i definitely was two in on the tyrant scorn there they were cards that it wasn't worth splashing i mean this tyrant scorn has sat in my hand then i make some bad decisions around it as well i really let i i so disproportionately your, valid this card do you try and get your um rouse outburst back here It doesn't he just have to kill the flyer with the tyrant scorn, doesn't he? That's like the play he has to make. It's doesn't kill it. Oh, it doesn't kill it. I thought it was under. Oh, is tyrant straight not three mana? Okay. Yeah. Oh, as okay. you can see, I do go back for the roll yeah. there. I mean, it's not saving you, unfortunately. No, it's not. Point. There is no god. <laughs> And and the filtering's working, you know, nicely. Like Wokers Burning Prophet's really good. And yeah, unfortunately yeah, nothing here is going to say it, it, it nothing feels great here, doesn't it? I mean, it? even looking through your deck, I'm not sure there's anything in your deck that lets you deal with a five six flyer on board. Except your maybe your own flyer. Which you could chump away for a turn. And, and, it, 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 is, it is interesting that actually flyers have been the bane of this deck, haven't they? Oh, yeah, wow. and then they've got to commence the end game as well. I mean, that's just that's just naughty. That yeah, thing's that... a brute of a card, isn't it? 
It is. It is. I uh, I, I keep going. Uh. You can, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how you're blocking the flyer at this point. Because um, you can take out the 8 for kudos points. Oh, I like that. Thinking about your... Uh, doesn't mean it doesn't work, but... <laughs> I, I survived this turn. How? You'll see. You, you, let, you only let two damage through, don't you? His hand. Yeah. <laughs> I survive a whole other turn! <laughs> I mean, that is, you know, uh, uh, as kind of um, desperation plays go, it's a pretty strong one. Does just your opponent has a full hand. And I, I have to ping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have to ping. Yeah, you can't ping the the thing because it'll ping you back and... And die. Yeah. So obviously, not a great place to be. No. Will you have to tyrant scorn the goblin? Because <laughs> you can't kill it. You can't block it. I'm I'm well aware at this point that I'm I'm just dead. I'm just going for sir, whatever I can do now. Hmm, interesting. You'd have uh, put the sword of weird down and have sent the goblin back. Like you, you can see, I've, I've I've accepted my loss there because I don't even play the. Yeah, there there were actually ways I possibly could have stayed in it a bit longer and got to Mike's mean, but I think, like Matt said, there weren't weren't really ways. But I had to deal with that flyer if it got big again. And and to be honest with you, even as a two three, like I didn't have any Jayers or Jayers greetings. Like I, I was lacking some core pieces of removal. Yeah, it feel it feels like just generally for a is it decks sort of rely a lot on their interaction, and your deck didn't have much. Inter your deck doesn't have an interaction really. No, no. A, it's a I, sorrowful three games. Although, I, like I said, I wasn't unhappy with the deck. I wasn't, you know. And and I think I one of the big problems is I did misjudge the value of Tyrant Scorn in this deck because what I saw was it's a card with two modes that triggers my spell Gorge Awards. This feels like the kind of card that's justified splashing for, and it really wasn't in this deck. That is probably, you know, and Harris zoned in on it straight away. That is probably the critical mistake, the absolute critical mistake. That it's, became sure, it's a double round, isn't it? Because you, you, it kind of, you fixated on it in draft. Because you fixated on it in draft, you fixated on it in game as well. And it's sort of remembering that kind of options are usually good, but not always. So. I'm well. intrigued that you chose to dump mm. the totally lost there. Actually, yeah, I th I think I had paranoia about planeswalkers. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but I do think in a vacuum, totally lost is much better than Sarkin's catharsis. So we're just going to sort of start the race here. Right. Yeah, it's got to start getting big at some point. Yeah, yeah. Because you can see, I'm not happy about it. Spell Gorger, yeah. Well, you were never going to maximize your mana there, were you? Um, no. Because there was Gorger into Tibalt feels fine. Or Spell Gorger into. Yeah, Tibalt was also a play. Ugh, last zone. Yeah. That I mean, like, all, of, all of your opponents have played a some sort of rare against you, so that's uh, that sucks. I didn't. The reason I didn't block there was because I didn't want to lose the burning profit. Yeah, and you're totally. Yeah, it's only your, two damage. It's fine. Yeah. That's yeah, totally within your rights to take. Should have been the Sarkin's catharsis there. Yeah. Very you, clearly. Yeah, you've got. I also think that possibly that. Tibalt was the play there, not. Yeah, not I the, think Tibalt was probably um, the play. Because then it presents a bunch of blockers that your opponent can't get through, and triggers your spell gorger. Which is nice. True. I mean, 
the first striker could have still got through them, but it, yeah, I will acknowledge the two-two. So now you, yeah, choose to hit the front. That's fair. I presume they do something here. Yeah. Yeah, that was painful. Um, and you're not going to hit your lie then. Oh, okay. Well, that's a decent thing to have. I, I'm quite happy with that. I mean, it would have been even nicer to to hit the the island for uh for, for my god eternal kefnet but i didn't and that that's another thing again i know you're probably searching oh, for land here. Oh. ouch god i remember oof, this oof, oof. and it fizzles because he sacked it there's no target yeah, that was some excellent play from Dean draw. sheep yeah i mean fair play really well uh, played from Dean sheep there having having picked up the um the Rouse Adverse there, I, I think you've got to maximise the fact that it's an instant and use it in combat to kind of just change some of the numbers. Yeah, and and that's 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 fair, but I'm trying to hit mana. I feel like I was quite plagued by mana problems in actually, well, certainly the last game and, and this game I struggled to hit the second blue, but then the last game I was flooded with blue. And then your black comes out as well just to spite you in the face. Yep. Right. So, you know, I'm I'm desperately trying to get to the blue here because I'm thinking, well, if I can get down my four five with its sort of pseudo indestructibility. So you just let everything through here, right? Yeah, I was super happy. I, I was would like, have oh, probably I've... stuck the two of them in front of the iron bully. I suppose I could have killed it off there, couldn't I? Yeah. I mean, they might have had a trick, but you're on seven life as well, so. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like two spells here. Yep. Because you're just going to try and stabilise, aren't you? And um, I, at this point, I was thinking, they seem weirdly in on killing planeswalkers. Maybe I can lure them into... I get the psychological aspect, but I think it would have been worth playing a creature that he didn't want to attack into. Oh, I just make a horrendous error here. That was me just not paying attention, so just ignore that. Uh, Straight away, I was like, that's just a total misclick. Ooh. And yeah. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be attacking you know, or anything there. <laughs> but that wasn't, that was, there was no, that was just a complete mistake. That was just one of those things that happens. Happens, man. Happens. Yeah. Um, people will um, sacrifice the wrong creature that's uh, the legendary when it's uh, bound in gold, don't they, Matt? True. <laughs> <laughs> I will gut you like a fish. Please but again, six, I was... The 1-1 one, one in front of the... You're not, you're not killing off the Iron Bully, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think my play... I think I would have benefited oh from... Oh, my goodness. Way then, after the losses. Know. Yeah, and so, then there's Feather. Feather doesn't look so bad, though, I guess, uh, against Kevin but they've probably got something to activate the Feather, right? They they have, yeah, that we, we get a little uh, reminder of constructed play of the time um, this turn, if I remember correctly. Oh, feather decks. Oh, yes. I love my Feather deck. I adore Fe playing Feather's that. fun. Fast. Oh, they're going to do shenanigans, aren't they? Mm. They're so going to do shenanigans. So you, my, my, my blocks of choice here are putting the 1-1 one, one under the 3-3 three, three and uh, the other two under the 1-1. One, one. So I think at there, I suddenly clocked onto what you picked up on like two turns ago about I can just get rid of the Iron Bully but just way later and then things happen oh they have the Defiant Strike goodness me which is probably the best card with Feather I mean it's common so I mean I'm not I'm not feeling salty about that you know that's yeah if you've got Feather you know oh 
Are you going to do more shenanigans? Oh, I just dome you. Uh, oh, just GG. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mamma uh, mia! Wait, were you, um, in that final game, do you think you've perhaps been a bit tilted off by the previous two games? Yeah, I think, I think, as I, I just said, like, I think it would have benefited to step away there because I think there were, that was probably the closest game. I think I that think, game was very, well, we didn't, we didn't see how it went, but um, with, how it, it was winnable, I think. Yeah, with, with different, with slightly different lines of play. Yeah, I think I could have got into that one because, like, obviously dealing with the Iron Bully slightly earlier, not running my 2-2 just into the 3-3, three, three, um, and a couple of things like that. Whereas the, the, especially the first game, I felt like I was never winning that one, like against the three walkers. My deck just wasn't, didn't have that kind of card quality. Um, but like I said, I wasn't unhappy with the deck totally. And to be honest with you, I wish I'd got the videos of the deck uh, that I drafted the the first War of the Spark one I did, because it wasn't much better than this. And that one I went five. You know, and I, I didn't have any games where opponents totally bricked on lands or anything like that. I probably played slightly better, but you know, and I would have said it, it was a slightly better deck. It didn't have a Kefnet in it though, but I would say on aggregate the cards were better. The average card in there was better. I had two Callous Dismissal as well. And I can't believe what a big impact they have in this deck. Yeah, they are huge additions. Just that ability to bounce a uh, to bounce any permanent. So yeah, like it's not the way I wanted my War of the Spark uh, kind of drafts to go. But I do feel like I learned a lot from playing it. And you know, also I think it's a big, big indicator that being in blue red alone, it does you do, you do still need to get the cards. And like you say, you need to think about a plan. And I think what you said about the best limited decks have a plan. And this had lots of like micro plans and no central plan. Yeah, it's interesting that you sort of um, said that you were sort of evaluating the card based on its constructive performance as well. That's if you do play, I mean, you, you've played more constructive than we have. You have limited, haven't you? And, uh, and especially and around the time of War of the Spark, like I was just kind of dipping into the draft format because i was just like oh i'm new to mtga like i'm playing around with this this is super fun whatever and i was playing a lot lot more yeah constructed whereas kind of now like i actually i can't remember the last time i played a game of constructed it's um, interesting for these sort of like uh, when when they put the older sets back up for on the premier draft now i guess it's the first time they put world spark on premier draft i think since they introduced it over the the bot draft mm, um, yeah yeah that, that actually there probably is this whole thing of, of people remembering older cards and their performance based on their constructed uh, performance rather than, than how they were in Limited. So I don't think it'll be the only one that's doing it. And uh, no. we'll sort of warp the draft. Well, in fairness, it, maybe the tell was the fact that you just you kept seeing them come up as well. I mean, it probably that, that's was true. drafting you know. Demir, but um, they were coming through a few times as well. But it hasn't discouraged me from doing more War of the Spark. I'm definitely going to fire some more War of the Spark drafts because it's so much fun. Like, it's cool I, getting to play loads of Planeswalkers. In it is. There. It feels really cool being like, here's my limited deck with, you know, maybe two, three Planeswalkers in. That feels fun, even if those Planeswalkers aren't always that impactful. But uh, they are still powerful cards. Grumble, grumble, grumble. I don't know. I, I just don't like it. I, I, I just all the but then again, I think it's for the same reason that I don't like Kaladesh Limited because I'm sh I, you know, I know Kaladesh Limited is is meant to be all right, but I'm just terrible at like analyzing vehicles. And in the same in the same respect, I'm really really bad at analyzing planeswalkers, and so I just don't like the limit. I often find that, that how much I like a limited environment is also is, is linked to <laughs> how good I am at it. I, and I was, shocker. Yeah, <laughs> shock, shocker. Uh, but even I, then, I like, limited environments that are just the vanilla curve. Yeah, I like. Well, one you know me. One, two two I love. I love a five five for five. This is why you like the Grizzly Outrider. I love. I adore True. Grizzly Outrider. Best card in the set. Convince me otherwise. <laughs> it, it is genuinely pretty decent. Yeah, it I've is. had a few decks where I, I've done quite well that have had one or maybe even two copies of that. It's great. Um, Big beat stick. Relevant uh, like card archetype. It's great. Love it. And nothing makes me better than strapping a raven's wings to it and making it fly. 
Yeah, I mean, the mental image boy. alone. Yeah, that's flappy a boy. <laughs> that's a different uh, draft environment. Well, right. Matt, thank you very much for sharing. It's, it's quite, it's always humbling to go through a, uh, through something that didn't through, go quite how you wanted it to. Through a zero three. Don't worry, it's fine. I'll probably just go and cry myself to sleep. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm right. gonna finish up that. Uh, that other Kalheim draft um, and see how that goes. But yeah, so hopefully everyone took something from that. Mainly oh, some laughs, maybe. <laughs> seeing, seeing, seeing my mental state decline across the three games. Um, As you blubbered into the keyboard on that final in that final game, whilst yeah. you Here's the learning. slaughtered your own two two. Here's the learning point from those games, everybody. Take a break after you lose two games in a row. Whether you're playing constructed or limited, if you lose two games in a row, take a five minute or ten minute break and step away. Have a mental reset. Yeah, it's a really important Sounds idea. fair. Absolutely. Right. Cool. Have a good one, everyone. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.